I've always considered myself a planner, but that does not mean I was always productive. Hey there, I'm Esther Atford, a brain engineer for entrepreneurs, and here to help you reduce procrastination and focus on what's most important in your business so that way you can grow your business with more ease while having more time and making it a whole lot more fun. Today, I'm going to share with you my evolution of planning. I've always been a planner, naturally. I'm going to share with you in a moment why um, that just happened naturally. But the way I've planned has changed drastically over the years because of my 28 thinking skills have improved. And I'm going to share that with you as I share my evolution. And I don't think it has reached the peak. I don't think we ever become perfect at something. And so I know, most definitely know that my planning will continue to change over the years. And I'd be happy to share that with you as that changed. But for now, I'm going to share with you how my planning changed up until today. Um, And besides to help you understand how the cognitive function affect it, I want for you to be able to see where you are and what step of this journey that I have taken, where has something similar have happened to you and how you plan. So that way you can see what your next step will be to really help you be able to plan even better. Ready? Let's do this. Okay, so like I said, I was always a natural planner. The reason for this is my thinking skill of having a need to make a plan is naturally strong. That's the way I was born. And If you don't have this thinking skill, it is okay. You can develop this thinking skill of having the need to make a plan and showing yourself the reason of why you should plan, right? Literally just start by giving yourself all the reasons what's going to help me by being able to plan. Um, And as you do it more often in more areas for more tasks, not just for planning your day, but for planning launches and for planning trips, it will become easier for you and having a plan will just be a thing that happens naturally, just like it was for you. But because it was a natural thing for me, I've been planning for as long as I could remember. I know for sure in high school, I have very vivid images of myself planning my day the night before. Um, But I'm going to guess I also did that before high school, um, just because it so much fits my personality and the fact that that thinking skill was so strong. So Like I said, I would plan my day every single day the night before, to-do list style, right? Like just a list of all the things that I needed to do. Um, And if you don't do that yet, I'm going to strongly suggest you start that now. Start with your having the need to make a plan and plan your day every single day. You can do it in the morning. I personally like to do it at night because that way when I wake up, like I can get right into it. But you do what works for you. Now, what happened was I started noticing there was a lot of things I would get really tired at night and like I just didn't have time to finish everything on my to-do list. And so the next step happened. I started recognizing how long tasks take and starting to figure out that not every single thing can happen now simply because of experience and being able to see over and over again that I couldn't fit everything in my allotted time that I started having another list. One list was everything that's going to happen tomorrow. Another thing was everything that was going to happen later. And later usually meant tomorrow or the next day. Like it wasn't too much thinking past that. Okay. Now at that time, I thought I was being very productive. I thought I never procrastinated. And it's true. I almost never did. I would have a schedule, I would follow my to-do list, do one thing after the next, just right away. And here's the thing. If I remembered that I needed to do something, right, and it would get added just onto my to-do list, I would go and do it right away. So if let's say, for example, I remembered that I needed to do an errand, I would run out and go do that errand, come home, continue following my to-do list. But then I remembered I need to do another errand. So I'd go out and do the errand again. I'd do a different errand. And then I would come home and mom would call me and ask me if I can go and do something. And I would go and out and do that errand again. So instead of going out of the house one time to do all three errands, I literally would go out of the house three times to go and do the errand. Now, at that time, I did not see that was a problem. I 
thought I was being super productive. But between me and you, you know that is not the smartest way to go and do things. So what I did recognize at the time was I knew there was always a way of getting better. And I had most definitely a growth mindset about being able to plan. And I wanted to be able to plan better. And so when I heard of Tony Robbins' rapid planning method, which is a planning course based on motivation instead of your to-do list. So essentially it teaches you not to follow your to-do list, but to think of your motivation of where you want to be in six months in a year's time. And based on that, do activities today to help you be able to get there. Now, I understood everything Tony was teaching. I did all the exercises of figuring out where your motivation is and where you want to be. But when it came to actual planning, something was just missing. I just couldn't do it. No matter how many times I tried, no matter how many times I played the recording, no matter how many times I did the exercise, I could not actually plan in that way. And so I decided, you know what? It's just not for me. This may be a great method. It's not for me. A couple months later, I went to take a training, another training in one of the 28 thinking skills called categorizations. Now, categorizations works in two ways. First, it works in taking a group of random items and splitting it into groups, right? So let's say I have a group of candy and splitting it um, based on color or splitting it based on company, whatever. That I could do no problem. The problem was that if there was a bunch of random items and we had to put it together into groups of like what, which one of these random items belong in a group together, that is what I struggled with. Now, I didn't struggle if it was like, let's say shoes and I could say like, okay, I could, there's a bunch of random pairs of shoes and I said like, okay, this is sneakers, this is heels. Like that I was able to do. But when it became more abstract, more complex, more levels of grouping, right? So put things first in one group. And then like, how many of those groups can you put in a bigger group? And how many of those things can you put in a bigger group? That is where I really, really struggled. Now, if you go back and you remember that I just said, being able to take random tasks and put them together in a group. So for example, random errands and put them together in a group instead of everything have to happen now. I struggled with that because my thinking skill of categorizations was weak. So I didn't even realize that was a problem. My brain didn't even realize there was an option to put things on a back burner and to say it is okay if it happens later. Because even if I knew the concept of not having to do it right now, it was so much in the front of my mind that I have to go and do this errand that I couldn't even think of everything else that I need to do because it was literally like, overtaking my life my brain didn't have the ability was struggling with that thinking skill being able to say this group is okay if it goes under the back burner it's not that we're procrastinating on it it's not that we're forgetting about it it's simply going in the back burner and at the right time we're going to go and do it and guess what that is going to help me be able to do it even faster so what happened was after i improved this cognitive function i started like naturally, without even realizing what I was doing, I was changing my order in my to-do list. Do you remember I was telling you about that to-do list that I started all the way back in high school? I started grouping tasks together on my to-do list. And I remember like I had like a line like at the bottom of the paper of things that are okay to happen later or things that are going to happen at a certain time together. And I would make like sections and I would start on a very small scale grouping things together so at that time was I'll say I would stop running out and do errands three times a day I'd go out once and do all the errands together okay and I started also like slowly it was like the beginning of like not checking email every single time an email came and it has to go out maybe like three or four times a day like I would just like do emails because I was much more like focused on the groups of the task now a little bit after doing that, I started realizing like, hey, I think I could do Tony Robbins program now. And I tried doing it and I was actually able to do it. I didn't even have to listen to it. I did listen to it because like I wanted to like make sure I knew it, what I was doing really well. But like I remember I was able to do it even like all of a sudden now it clicked. All of a sudden now it worked. And all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, this is way too 
cool. And so I started rapid planning type of method, which is planning based on your motivation and not your to-do list. Now, over the years, like I've, as like I continue sharing with you, like I do less and less of specifically Tony's style of exactly his plan, how to do it. But I most definitely have the principles of planning thing based on what my motivation is instead of just, oh, like I just have to go and do laundry type of thing. So that most definitely had has had a big effect. Now, as I got better at this and my cognitive function was like all of a sudden improving and I was like arranging things differently and like all these ideas and business changed and like as like how I could start doing it in groups and it affected a lot of my life categorizations. I started planning my day every single besides besides for just planning my day every single day the night before I started planning my week every single Friday. So on Friday, as I was like wrapping up my week, I would take some time to look at my week ahead and start planning a week. Now, this was massive for someone who thinks everything needs to happen now. Now I could start thinking about the whole week ahead and I could start thinking bigger picture of the week and being able to say like, hey, maybe I don't have to do errands every day. I can only do errands every other day. Or maybe I don't have to do like this task. Like I started a lot of my tasks were more like on a weekly scale instead of on a daily scale. Does that make sense? And that like saved me crazy, crazy amounts of time. Probably like doing that saved me like another 10 hours a week was like crazy. I literally like readjusted a lot of what I was doing because I improved that kind of function. Now, Here's the thing. As I got better at that, I was like, why are we staying on the weekly scale? It's time to think about a monthly scale. So I bought these big calendars, big, huge calendars, and I hung up three months. I think I started with three months, and a little bit later, I added six months. Now I have like 12 months at a time. But the point was to start planning on a three month scale. And now I didn't just plan. And what has to happen this week? I would put plan what has to happen on these next three months. So podcasting, instead of having to do podcasting every single day, I started doing podcasting once for the next three, four months. Instead of having to record content every single day, it would be once for the next couple of weeks. Do, we see, do you see how this is going? And this worked with all areas of my life. Now I was able to start thinking, even bigger picture okay and that like constantly grows like I said like now I have 12 months on the calendar and I am like literally thinking about when we're doing cohorts when we're doing on a yearly scale when I'm recording YouTube videos when I'm recording podcasts like on a yearly scale things get planned on a really big scale I still plan my week every single Friday um to make sure everything is still like according to plan and if there's anything that has to be changes but The more and more I do this, the less and less changes there has to be. Obviously, life always throws surprises and things happen. Um, But I, so I still plan my week the night before, the every Friday and the night before at this point is not so much of planning. It's more of like just reviewing and like making sure everything's still okay. But just like, I like to be prepared. So that way when I wake up in the morning, I don't have to like think about, okay, like what I'm doing today, but it gets even cooler. The grouping got even more. So besides for being able to think the big picture is able to group a lot more things. So first of all, now I only, I group even my zoom meetings. So I group, for example, twice a week for the most part, I'm on zoom all day, twice a week, but the other days of the week, there's no zoom calls, no client meetings, no nothing. Everything happens twice a week. And the other days, gives me time to do everything else that I need to do in my business. And it's focused. So that way, like today, I can record video after video after video for YouTube. That's like literally just what I'm doing. But it goes on even a deeper level. On the days, let's say, that I am batching, let's say, writing podcast episodes, I'm not just writing a whole bunch of podcast episodes. Every part of the podcast episode gets batched together. So if you listen to the Business Brain Podcast, which you should and subscribe to, um, there you know that there's a lot of sections to it. So we have like the intro, we have the part about the cognitive functions, we have the practical, we have the challenge, etc. Instead of me doing 
all of episode 450, all of episode 451, I do all the intros for the next three, four, five months, however many I'm recording. And then I'm doing all the questions that I'm doing for the next three, four or five months, with all the CTAs, right? So my brain is literally batching all of those for such a long time. Does that make sense? Like literally as much as it can be batched, that is how much every single step of the way. Okay. Like not just in the recording part, not just in the writing part, within the writing, every group gets batched. And as that is the place of where I'm currently standing today of like trying to figure out what other places in my life can be batched because I know how much time it saves literally. First of all, your brain doesn't have to start up every single time. Um, every time you start a task, like uses the most energy, like when you start a car. So every single time you start a new type of task, your brain literally uses the most energy. So when you can stay in that same type, then it stays in there forever and just literally takes less brain energy and it actually goes a lot faster. Um, so currently that's my my state of like seeing where else, what else can I group things faster? So when for you, as you walk away from this, I want you to think of like where you are at. If you're like literally don't plan at all, you got to start by by planning on a daily basis. If you're already planning on a daily basis, start by thinking about planning on a weekly basis. If you're already planning on a weekly basis, see if you could do monthly or quarterly. If you're already doing that, I want you to look at your tasks and see where what can you group together so that way it will save you even more time and happen a lot faster crossing off as soon enough to wake up every morning oh my god i need to put out another podcast episode or youtube let me know below where you are up to so that way we can be together with you on this journey and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss another episode bye for now